Yo everyone. Starting off this post feels a bit off, gotta admit. My buddy pointed me to this page after I spilled about what's been going on with me lately. Seems like folks here are tackling similar stuff. Before anyone suggests I see a pro instead of airing it here, relax I've got an appointment with a shrink set for next Monday. And I've swapped out the batteries in my carbon monoxide detectors at home, just in case some gas leaks messing with my head. No dice. Anyway, let's dive in. Back when I was a youngin, like six or seven, I moved in with my pops out in Montana. My folks split when I was too young to even recall it. Mom settled in Florida with her new dude, Carl, and his three rugrats. Pops offered to take me while Mom got her bearings in Florida, then he snagged full custody about a year later. Mom signed off, and I was officially living with Pops in his crib. It was a three-bed, two-bath setup with a massive backyard and no neighbors for miles. But what sticks with me most about that place was the basement. My old man, he had this thing for hunting and tinkering, a real down-to-earth type. He was all right, but there was this coldness about him. Sure, he was nice to me, always holding my hand in public, but I can't recall him ever giving me a hug. Even when he smiled, it didn't quite reach his eyes. I don't think he was keen on having a kid, and I reckon my mom saw me as a reminder of her first marriage gone wrong. So, he was trying his best to make my childhood decent, despite not really wanting it. Anyhow, he'd spend hours down in the basement, messing around with different projects. He'd do taxidermy on the animals he hunted, which freaked me out, but it seemed to bring him joy, so I didn't make a fuss. When he was happy, it brought a bit of light to our otherwise dull house. Our crib was set on a chunk of land with a dense forest in the rear. Pops fenced off the trees so I wouldn't wander off and built a swing set near the back door. There was this small window by the back door that looked into the basement. I told Pops I could watch him do his thing while I swung, but he slapped up blackout curtains. I was baffled and kinda hurt, but he said he just liked his space while he worked. With no pals around and the neighbors miles away, I kept myself entertained with games, TV, dolls, and swinging out back. The place, despite just us two, was noisy. Pops's tools echoed through the living room, despite the thick walls he put up downstairs. Sometimes I could swear I heard crying or whimpering. Once or twice, it sounded like a full-on scream. He brushed it off, saying it was just the old house settling, breathing like a person. The way he said that, like some riddle, got to me. I stopped bringing it up after a while. Some nights, I'd catch these faint, whimpering creaks, and sometimes they sounded a bit too human. I'd huddle in my room, door shut tight, fearing those creaks weren't just the house settling, but something lurking out there in the dark. Then, one night, right around my eighth birthday, that fear became reality. Pops had already come up from the basement, wrapped up his work for the night, and turned off the hallway light. I'd always hear his heavy steps on the carpeted stairs and see the light vanish from beneath my door, signaling bedtime. I rarely left my room after that, didn't want to risk waking him. Did it once, and he was in a foul mood the next day, snapping at every little thing. Him like that scared the hell out of me. But this particular night, I was parched. All I craved was a sip of water to quench my thirst. After considering the dangers, I stealthily crept out of my room and down the carpeted stairs, aiming to meld into the quiet and darkness. Yet, when I reached the foot of the stairs, I noticed something unsettling the basement door was ajar. That door never budged. It yawned wide, its dark abyss staring me down, menacingly. I was desperate to put some distance between me and that door. Something deep inside told me, whatever lurked down there, for whatever reason, I wasn't meant to lay eyes on it. Couldn't tell if it was just the childhood dread of the dark or fear of Pops's reaction, but I was genuinely terrified. Before I could scurry back upstairs, I caught a whimper from the kitchen corner. I instinctively recoiled, then realized the sound was unmistakably human, or at least animal-like. Figuring some critter had snuck in from the woods, I peeked around the corner to find a scruffy little girl, maybe a couple years younger than me, huddled on the floor. In raggedy, filthy pajamas, and with hair tangled and unkempt, she looked like a ghastly shadow of a person. She was so gaunt she barely resembled a human being. I stood there frozen as she gazed up at me, her eyes cloudy and distant. It was as if she couldn't see me, perhaps she was blind. She just stared silently. Moments passed with neither of us moving. Finally, she parted her lips and whispered something a hoarse, barely human sound. Tentatively, I leaned closer, asking her to repeat herself. 
As she widened her mouth, almost appearing otherworldly, I saw it. The jagged stump of a tongue, freshly severed. She uttered something unintelligible, sending shivers down my spine. I was so terrified I blacked out right there on the kitchen floor, with this eerie figure looming over me, chanting a chilling refrain. Gavi, Gavni! When I woke up the next day, I found myself back in bed. The only clue to my midnight excursion was a full glass of water by my bedside. Just a glass of water, yet it sent shivers down my spine. As I descended the stairs, Dad was whipping up pancakes, flashing one of his fake smiles. The basement door was shut tight once more. It never stayed open again. Now, fast forward to today. It's been around 15 years since that freaky incident, and I'm down in Florida, a mere 20-minute drive from Mom's place. After college, her health took a nosedive, and she reached out to me, looking to mend fences. I was cautious at first, but deep down, I've always yearned for a bond with her, so I gave it a shot. Surprisingly, we've grown really tight-knit, and I step in to help out when my stepdad, Carl, is busy with work or needs a hand. So, I got this new spot, it's a single-story joint, two bedrooms, nestled in a pretty decent hood. Just me living solo, and usually, things are chill, but lately, I've been feeling like I'm on thin ice mentally. Can't tell if it's the strain of mom's illness getting to me, or if I'm straight up losing my marbles, but there's this recurring late-night guest. It's her the girl from my past. She's aged, almost like she's grown alongside me. Below the floorboards, there's this incessant scratching, as if someone's clawing their way out from under the ground, desperate to flee a basement. Funny thing is, I'm down here in Florida, we don't do basements with the water table so high. Yet, every night, I'm haunted by the echoes of my childhood home whimpers, creaks, and cries. It defies logic, I know, but it's happening, and I'm powerless to halt it. Now, she's everywhere in my crib, especially after dark. That cursed phrase keeps spewing from her gaping jaw, that tongue less stump just flapping around. All I want is for her to vanish. It's been nearly a month of this madness. I'm desperate for a solution. I've screamed for her to scram, but she just falls silent for a moment, then resumes her chant. Ghosts and whatnot aren't really my thing, despite the title of this post, but if this persists, I might just dial up a medium. Anything to put an end to this torment. So, if any of you got any wisdom to share or a clue about what's causing this, I'm all ears. Appreciate it, folks.